Hi, Tamal. Welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. This week in your column, you've touched uh, on a rather sensitive subject and you've talked about the trends in the uh, tenure of the private uh, sector bank CEOs. So what are some of your observations and what do you think of the current trends in the tenures of these CEOs? India is a very few market actually where the uh, CEO tenure is capped. Uh, the other three, among the G20 nations, there is no other nation. Uh, there are three other countries I am aware of it, Ghana, Myanmar and Nigeria, where the CEO tenure is capped. Um, if you look at the US, uh, there, are, <laughs> there are CEOs who have been there for decades and decades, four decades, three decades. Um, um, there are many, many examples. Uh, so that's a, that's a presenting mere facts. Um, other part is this, uh, you know, what happens is this, um, you don't get at one shot, right? Visa Bank of India, what the RBI norm says about uh, private sector bank CEOs, that you can have 15 years and retirement age is 70. Uh, so if you are a young CEO, and I've given one example, uh, who will be, completing 15 years in his 50s. So then what is going to happen? RBI says that if you are, if you complete 15 years and you're still not 70 and you are eligible to for a reappointment, then you have to stay away from the bank in, whatever, in whichever way, completely have nothing to do for at least three years. And then you can be reconsidered. So RBI norm, what is currently is in place is if you are a promoter, then you cannot have more than 12 years. If you are a professional CEO, you cannot have more than 15 years. And the other side is this uh, 70 year is the uh, 70 year is the is the retirement age. There are differences in private uh, sector and public sector banks also when it comes to these uh, practices. Can you take us through what are what are the differences and how, how do you compare them? In in private sector, 70 year is the retirement age. 15 years for professionals and 12 years for promoters. That's it. And as I said, if you are young enough uh, to continue, then you have to wait for three years, a full separation from the entity. You can continue again after 15 years, after 18 years. But in public sector, it's a very different ball game. Uh, till recently, it was typically three years, two years, even less than two years. And retirement age was six. Now, um, what happened is this uh, last year, finance ministry, and remember, uh, the public sector appointments are done by government at the um, on the recommendations of the new avatar of Bank's Board Bureau. Uh, that one, the government is government as the power of appointment, and the government is the power of sacking. RBI has nothing to do with this, as far as public public sector bank CEOs. Now, what are the current norms of the public sector bank CEOs? Your tenure become five years. And it can be another five years. But can you cross 60 years? No, that's not the case. And again, among the government-owned banks, State Bank of India has different norms. In case of State Bank of India, the, the in case of State Bank of India is the chairman, unlike the other nationalized banks, which is MD, in, in case of State Bank of India, one can be a chairman before 60. And uh, it's a three-year tenure. So, if you are approaching 60 and become the chairman, uh, almost when you are 63, you can be there. And in the uh, history of State Bank of India, we have only one instance, um, Arunuti Bhattacharya, she got one year extension, otherwise no extension. What is the policy for appointments? Well, appointments, uh, as I said, for the public sector banks, appointments are done by the government. Reserve Bank of India has nothing to do. And of course, earlier it was directly by the government, but then the BBB Bank Board Bureau came. It has been renamed now. So that's the recommendation authority and the, go and the government does the rest of it. As far as public sector banks are concerned, typically board recommends the persons. And there is never a one name sent to the uh, RBI. Typically, it's a three names uh, is the Bank of India given. Um, and if you see, uh, again, going by the tradition, uh, RBI does not get into the value judgment whether number one is better than number two or number two is better than number one or where does number three stand, nothing like that. RBI, I think, approaches get into the fit and proper criterion. 
if the person is fit and proper, so it's essentially a tick mark kind of thing. Number one gets the RBI not, Un unless and until the person is thick, uh, you know, uh, fit and proper. Number two is not looked into, or number three is not. Looked into. But other exceptions, yes. Very recently, I mean, a uh, little over a year back, uh, RBL was one case was an exception where the number one recommended person did not get the nod of Reserve Bank of India number to got it. And that was not uh, fit and not on the basis on fit and proper criteria because number one person who was recommended by the board was uh, a, indeed a fit and proper person. But RBI felt that person probably would not be able to handle the bank at that, 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 that point of time, RBL, the state of affairs, was a little sensitive. Uh, so RBI chose number two. But that's an, I let me repeat, that's an exception. One last thing, Tamal, that we have to touch upon is the bank earnings and the results have started coming in. There have also been some concerns, uh, some reports about uh, concerns around new NPAs. What do you think of the trends in the bank earnings and are there any areas of concern? So as of now, as we speak, uh, things are pretty good. The banking sector is continuing with the, with the good period or golden period, whatever you said. Uh, I think they never had so good in the past one decade at least. Uh, but there are challenges ahead, challenges, uh, namely two challenges. One is the credit cost, particularly in the retail segment. And second is uh, the cost of deposits. So they will not be able to earn, uh, they will not be able to jack up their interest rates anymore. The lending rates, because we have reached a peak um, as far as lending rates are concerned, uh, policy rate is concerned. But they will have to keep on uh, maintaining the high deposit rates or if not make it even higher for the next six to nine months to attract deposit to support their credit. All right. Uh, well, Tamar, that's a very balanced view that you've given of the bank earnings that the growth trend continues. But as you said, challenges persist and uh, great food for thought on the issue of tenure as well. And uh, thanks for putting in context the tenure and the consolidation of banks and the fact that we have completely different rules for nationalized banks, for private banks and the um, uh, SBI. Of course, uh, I, I'm sure that there are the right people who are listening and maybe we might see some action on this front in the future. Thank you so much, Tamal, for joining us today and we'll see you next week. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.